All right, guys, here it is. It's finally here, the RX 6900 XT from AMD. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, no, wait. This is, this is the RX 6800, my bad. This is the RX 6900 XT in the flesh. Absolutely beautiful card. No wait, I'm sorry, this is the, this is the 6800 XT. Son of a, this is the new 6900 XT and it's glorious. You know, I'm probably gonna get in trouble for saying this, but all these AMD GPUs kind of look alike. Welcome to another paper review where we review products that have just paper launched. Can you buy them? No. Should you be excited though? No. That's okay, I'm gonna make the video anyway because it's my job and I have a mortgage to pay. Today on the test bench, we've got the RX 6900 XT from AMD. It has an MSRP of 999 US dollars, which is $500 cheaper than its direct competitor from Nvidia, which is the RTX 3090 FE. Since I do not have a 3090 FE on hand today because I just don't have one. This is the best I could do. I'm gonna be upfront with you guys, fully transparent. I'm testing it against this guy, which is the RTX 3090 Supreme X from MSI. It's not a fair fight, really. This is a factory overclocked card. It's got an aftermarket PCB, upgraded power delivery and all that stuff, but I gotta roll with what I got. So to make things a little bit more fair, I've actually run uh, all of today's tests with this guy overclocked. Since that's factory overclocked, we're running this in rage mode for all of today's tests, which is AMD's one-click overclock within the Radeon settings. Rattling off some basic specs really quick. We've got 80 compute units, boost clock, up to 2250 megahertz. We'll see the card go beyond that, of course, because we are enabling rage mode. Uh, we've got 16 gigs of GDDR6 memory on a 256 bit memory bus and a TGP or thermal graphics power of 300 watts. AMD recommends an 850 watt unit for this guy. But in my testing in our division two 4K benchmark, we saw the 6900 XT system pull a max of just 502 watts from the wall that was full system power draw compared to the much higher 654 watts that the RTX 3090 Supreme X system was drawing. And and that makes a lot of sense because we are dealing with an aftermarket card for the RTX 3090, and even the 3090 FE already has a higher TGP right out of the box than the 6900 XT. It's 350 watts versus 300 watts respectively. AMD does officially recommend an 850 watt power supply for the 6900 XT. I think that's a fair uh, recommendation. I think you could probably get away with maybe 750 watts. Let's say you were already, uh, you're just upgrading your GPU. You already have a 750 watt unit in there. As long as you're not trying to break any overclocking records or pump as much voltage through your CPU and GPU as possible. I found that a 750 watt unit that's reliable and has an 80 plus certification should be more than adequate to drive this card. As far as temps go, the 6900 XT only hit a maximum of 76 degrees Celsius under load. That was after a 15 minute run in Unigen Heaven 4.0 at 2560 by 1440. Quite a bit cooler than our Supreme X, which is pretty impressive considering that's an aftermarket cooler. It even ran a couple degrees cooler than the 6800 XT, which my guess is due to rage mode. Since that does ramp up the fan curve, it was probably just providing a bit more additional cooling. I didn't do a sound test this time around, it's basically the same story that we've seen with all the other cards that have recently launched ever since AMD and Nvidia have moved away from their blower style designs, you know, AMD more recently than Nvidia. These cards are plenty quiet, even in rage mode. It's a little audible, but nowhere near, you know, the level of obnoxiousness or distraction uh, that you might expect from one of those blower style cards. So yeah, no, no noise complaints should be filed against the 6900 XT. Now under load, again, with rage mode enabled, this card hit a sustained clock speed of 2,424 megahertz, which is blazing fast. It's definitely the chart topper in this test. And it looks like the Nvidia cards pale in comparison here. Of course, clock speed is just a number. It's one of many factors that factor into performance. So take it with a grain of salt. It doesn't necessarily mean that one card is faster than the other just based on this number alone. That being said, it is nice to see these cards, these new RDNA 2 cards being able to clock so high. They are fun to overclock, but bear in mind that if you are gonna be OCing them that you wanna validate your overclocks uh, to ensure that you're actually seeing a bump in performance. In my testing uh, previously in a, in a different video, when I was overclocking, I think it was the 6800 XT, did some overclocking with it, and I found that just because I was able to hit a higher frequency that seemed stable, didn't always translate into a performance bump. So you, you definitely want to run before and after tests to make sure that uh, your overclock is working for you and not against you. With that said, I think we're pretty much ready to take a look at the benchmark slides. Again, I'm testing this with a Ryzen 9 5950X running stock on an A, no, Aorus, Aorus X570 master motherboard with 16 gigs of DDR4 uh, G-Skill memory at 3600 speed and I'm using all the latest drivers from AMD and Nvidia. Stick around for after the slides we have a few key points to talk about and ultimately decide which of these GPUs you should buy. You know, if you could.
All right, so let's take a look at the overall performance first before we move on to everything else. So if we're just looking at gaming performance with the RX 6900 XT as our baseline of 100%, the RTX 3090 Supreme X delivered 9% more performance on average. Now remember that Nvidia doesn't claim that the RTX 3090 is a gaming specific GPU, but more so a workstation card first, and it can also kick ass in some games as well if you want it to. But there's a lot of people who are snatching up RTX 3090s, really lucky people who are snatching them up, uh, who are buying them just for gaming. So we have to consider that, you know, in a hypothetical situation, if you are just looking for a graphics card just to game, is the 9% bump in performance really worth the $500 premium over the 6900 XT? That's just talking about gaming performance though. After we talk about all this, we have to dive in a little bit more into the, the full packages, the technologies, and the, the various features that each card and each family of GPU comes with. Uh, but if we're just talking about actual gaming performance, and that's, let's say, all you care about, it's hard to justify the 3090's price for just a single digit performance uplift. But then you look at the RTX 3080 and the RX 6800 XT, neither of those cards are very far behind the 6900 XT in terms of performance, but they are quite a bit cheaper, $300 and $350 cheaper, respectively, and that makes them technically a better value. So again, we're seeing law of diminishing returns here, and it kind of boils down to the end user. Are you looking just for the most frames rendered possible at any cost, or are you more budget conscious and you're trying to get the best bang for the buck? If that's the case, go for something like an RTX 3070 or an RTX 3060 Ti, but that's also in a different performance tier than what we're talking about here. We see a similar trend at 2160p with the RTX 3090 Supreme delivering 6% more frames on average than the 6900 XT, albeit for a much higher price, with the RTX 3080 and RX 6800 XT, again, not trailing too far behind. And the 6900 XT was only about 5% faster than the RTX 3080 here, and roughly 10% faster than the 6800 XT. So the way that I see it is if you're gaming at 4K, the RTX 3080 and RX 6800 XT are perfectly adequate cards to, to handle that resolution, and they can do so at a much better value than the 6900 XT or you know, even more so with the RTX 3090. However, if you wanna go balls to the wall and you just wanna render as many frames as possible, you would go with the RTX 3090, assuming that you also have very deep pockets. That being said, if you don't wanna drop $1,500 on a graphics card, but you still want more performance than what the 3080 and 6800 XT are capable of, the 6900 XT is kind of that sweet spot both in terms of price and performance in between those 700 ish dollar cards and the RTX 3090. It does provide sort of a stopgap when it comes to price and performance there. Where it gets a little tricky is when we start talking about the various technologies and features that are bundled with each of these cards. Nvidia obviously having a bit more ray tracing performance under its belt, as well as technologies like DLSS 2.0, which is very effective that we, as we've seen in testing. Um, so, you know, it's one of those things where DLSS maybe isn't uh, on your radar just yet, or maybe it's not super appealing to you right now, but you also have to consider that, you know, it's going to be growing, it's gonna be implemented in more games. Uh, with DLSS 2.0, Nvidia has actually made the technology a lot less game specific, so it's much easier to integrate into various titles in the future. So you have to imagine that, you know, if you're gonna be buying a graphics card that you're gonna keep for a number of years, that there's gonna be a lot more games that have DLSS by the end of, you know, when, when you're ready to, to upgrade your GPU. Um, it's just very much like ray tracing had zero support at first, and now there's a bunch more games that have it. As a quick little test, I actually ran our control benchmark with the RTX 3060 Ti uh, with DLSS enabled. Um, at 1440p, it was actually only rendering 1280 by 720 and then upscaling that to 1440p. It was averaging 115 frames per second. The RTX 3090, for comparison, without DLSS, scored 88 frames per second on average. So it's outperforming a $1,500 graphics card and still looking visually more or less the same. I do find DLSS very impressive, and I think it is something that you should consider before dropping a large amount of money on a graphics card. You know, on top of that, they've also got NVIDIA Broadcast, which is super appealing for streamers, and AMD has its fair share of technologies and features as well. Radeon image sharpening, anti-lag. I mean, the list kind of goes on. For me personally, I think DLSS with NVIDIA is by far the most appealing feature slash technology for me. So it really just boils down to how much is DLSS worth to you. And of course, this narrative changes completely if you're gonna be doing more workstation tasks with either of these GPUs. The RTX 3090 has that massive 24 gig frame buffer of GDDR6X. So it's something to consider if you are gonna be tapping into the VRAM, you're gonna be utilizing a lot of it, then that could very well justify the, the crazy premium over the 6900 XT. While this is all very fun and interesting to talk about, none of it matters because you can't buy any of these GPUs anyway, which is why I'm ending the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. Toss a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed for more tech content on the way, and I will see you guys in the next video.